Father, we come today, oh God. We come to glorify you. Father, we stand with lifted up hands, oh God. We come to worship you, God. You made a way. You blessed us, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful day. It's you, God. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, we magnify you. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Father God, for healing us this morning. Thank you, God for giving us peace today. Thank you, God, for watching over us, this, over us today. We just want to tell you, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, we ask you, oh God, to bless this land, bless your people, bless your food, God. Father God, this is your place, God. Bless the hands that prepared your meal. Oh God, we give glory to you. Oh, we give honor and praise to you. It's you, God. It's you, God. It's you, God. We just want to say thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you. Just roll your head back and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Father, we thank you for the people, oh God. Father God, that you send the voice, oh God, into every room, God. Send your glory, God. And break every yoke, God. Break every chain. And loose, God. Oh, we bless you. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. You're so mighty. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah! Glory. 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 
Try to sip on it. Don't try to drink it. Because you know it's cold, it might make it cold again. So just try to sip on it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So if you're interested in learning how to build your own brand, we'll just sell brand. I can man. show you the system and the way how to teach things in a second. Yes. So for a little bit, I'm going to move. I'm going to teach you the exact same thing. And how to start your own business. Even if you're working on your own brand. And it doesn't matter if you're not going to say it or not. You can just start with that. So click on this one right now. You can see you on the other side. But you can do everything but fail. Yeah, we have yeah, to yeah. provide, make a hunger and a thirst in every heart, Lord, yeah. in this circle, Lord, yeah. for the name of Jesus, yeah. for the spiritual blessings, Lord, that only you can give calls on each and every one of us to crave you all. Jesus. Crave your presence, crave your praise, crave your power, yeah. and empower us and cause us to walk in the power. Cause us to make the end of men in the dream of the world. As my brother said, Lord, the earth will be supposed to be the Yes, yes. So we have to fight for us to be able to take out the right positions, Lord, in our families, in our lives, in our homes, Lord. So it is such a way that you can be magnified and glorified. Most people think that diarrhea is just yeah, 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 yeah. the thing. The fact is, diarrhea is your body's last ditch, desperate attempt to get things moving again. Amen. So you know the diarrhea moves things along. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord truly has made. And the word of God says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for truly another great day in the land of the living, huh? Hallelujah to God that touch us this morning and allow us to wake up in the right state of mind and he didn't stop there he allowed you to move each and every one of your activities and your limb to be functioning this morning now that's the kind of god that we serve huh? hallelujah he watched over us throughout the night as we slept as we slumber huh? hallelujah his grace is so sufficient huh? hallelujah uh, we just come just to give god all the praise and all the glory because he truly deserves it. He truly deserves it. Huh? I'm talking about the God that spoke life into existence. I'm talking about the God, hallelujah, that took dirt from the ground and made and molded man into his divine and, uh, and awesome image. Huh? Hallelujah. That's the only God that know, I know that has rose from the dead. Huh? Every other God is dead. But the God of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, huh? the third day he rose. The third day, I say the third day, number three, huh? he rose and he rose with all power. All power is in the palm of his hand. Huh? Hallelujah. He stripped us. He redeemed us. He saved us. He delivered us from the power of sin. Huh? Hallelujah. I don't put power on sin, but we were doing so much stuff in this world here. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're doing so much of stuff in this world. But we just thank God. We just thank God for our saving God. We just thank God that he redeemed us from the curse of this world. Huh? No longer we are cursed now. We are blessed to, the, to Jesus Christ now. Huh? Hallelujah. The word of God said when he was talking about it in Ezekiel, he was talking about some dry, some dry bones. Huh? In, the, in the valley, in the valley, in the valley of some dry bones. Huh? And he told Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel to prophesy. He told him to prophesy what? The word of God. See, you have to be in the Word, the prophesied the Word of God. And the Bible said Jesus come to redeem us. Huh? So you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord huh? and personal Savior. Now you can operate in the kingdom of God. Huh? Anybody can use the name, but if you haven't been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, now there's no power in you now. Huh? But when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now you got power when you use the name of Jesus, huh? You can lay hands on the sick, huh? And the Bible said it shall be recovered. You can cast out unclean spirit in Jesus' name, huh? Because it's power. And, 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 and God was speaking to this man of God. It was the valley, valley of, of, of dry bones. 
and they were dry, they were dry, man, and, and they had no activity, no flesh on these bones. The bone was about to turn to powder. But see, God is a miracle running to God. The Bible said with man, it's impossible. I said with man, it's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. God won't do the impossible things in your life. And some things that try to dry up in your life today, now, huh? what you mean? You may be going through some finance issues. You may be going through some sickness issues. Whatever it is, it, it's, it's trying to dry up in your life. But I can come to that and let you know that you can prophesy if, if, if you have the word of God. But you know, we got some man of God on this, on, up on him that can lead you to the road of salvation. The brother just asked somebody there already. But you got to want this here. We got to have a mentality now. I'm, I'm sick and sick and tired. I'm going around in circle now. Huh? God said I give you life. And I give you life more abundantly. Hallelujah. He's talking about down here. And where we can have abundant life down here. According to the word of God. When you line up with the word now. The word could come out your mouth to a body. You could be the living word. But God need a body. He don't need no anybody. He need a willing body that's gonna want him. They're gonna say, Here am I, God. You take the, the you take the will. You take full control of my life. Uh -huh. And when you line up with the word now, God can use you in any capacity, huh? You just has you just gotta have that mindset, here am I, God. Here am I. But God use this man of God to prophesy to a dead situation, man. To dry bones. The valley called in the valley of dry bones. And he told, he told Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? He asked a question to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel, he looked at the condition. He looked at the situation. But he didn't complain. He didn't murmur. He didn't cry. He said, God, you know. Because they're bones. And no tears on these bones. And no life on these bones. And then Ezekiel said, God, you know. And so they had a conversation, him and God, talking about these dry bones right here, huh? I don't, see, God will to use you to do some supernatural miracles. God will to use you to do his work. Hallelujah. And then Ezekiel had a conversation with it go. And he said, God, you know. Now God starts speaking back to him. And he told his sick, he said, now, nah, I need you to do something. I need you to start prophesizing. Prophesizing the word of God to that dead situation. Uh -huh. See, when God tell you something, he's well able. The word of God says he's well able to perform his word. His word will never come back to him. Lord, now if you receive him now, God said, I'm looking for a body. I need a willing body. He's not just looking for a body that's going to serve him every blue moon or every night and day. See, you got to be dedicated, not to man. You got to be dedicated to God. Now, they got a lot of gods out here. But I'm talking about the big G go with no S. Now, they got some gods come out the small G with S now. I, I don't serve them type of gods no more. I used to serve them because they're poor with his name. But the God that I serve, he's capital and he has, he's gone, he's gone. I say he's gone and he's gone all by himself. He don't need us, we need him. So God is looking, God is looking for some God chasers today. And stop chasing after drugs. Stop chasing after women. Stop chasing after money. Stop chasing after men. Stop chasing after causing things in this world. Chase after God. Because the Bible says, first seek the kingdom of God, huh? And all of his righteousness and all these other things, things in this world, are going to be added to you. See, you and God is a God of divine order. And when you out of order with the word of God, things going to be a slow process in your life. But when you operate in order, you are going to see the hands of God move. In such a prophetic way in your life. God is the healer. God is the deliverer. God is the provider. God is a father for the fathers. 
go to the mother to the motherless. He could be anything that you want him to be. Because he's that. Hallelujah. And he can hear all our prayers at the same time. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, what I think of, uh, I forgot that the prophet name. The prophet that when God went and he had to build, build that altar. He built the altar. And he, and he, and he was saying, and now y'all, Elijah, you gonna help out? Said, I ain't gonna sit the top. Elisha was another prophet. But see, he had, he, 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 was, had so much confidence yes, in his goal. Uh -huh. yes. See, he had to rebuild an altar. But he said, now, now you call on your goal. So I'll give you the opportunity to call on your goal first. And so they start calling on their goal. And, 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 and nothing happened. He might just start cracking jokes. He, he's still there. He's still saying, uh, when you're going in now, your, your, your government can't hit you. Your government be tending to somebody else. Your government be on vacation. So I, I'm just adding on that the virus. I'm just, I'm just adding that too because that people were saying that where his goal wasn't asking, it prayed, you know? And it was turning like a rainbow in their face because it was praying so hard and their goal didn't even manifest. But see, Elijah, Elijah had to rebuild the altar. And, and then he literally said, he said, give me some water. See, they didn't have no holes like that then. You know what I mean? He said, give me some buckets of water. And he, and he kept saturated, saturated with water. And so you know you can't be like that. And that altar is full of water. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. But he said, the first go. I said, come on. He said, the first go. That rain fire from heaven. And like this altar, huh? That is the truth and living God. Huh? See, he made it impossible for man. But he it didn't make it impossible for him. Huh? See, God can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. And see, now they're looking at they looking at him like he crazy man. Now, how in the world are you gonna light an altar saturated with water? I'm not gonna light it. My God gonna light it. If my God is I, I give something to him to do. See, you gotta give it to God. See, you can't you can't solve that problem. You've been in that mess too long, now. Huh? You gotta give that whole problem to God. Huh? You try to find yourself. You try to do it yourself. So is it? So Elijah said, God, he stopped praying, and something went up, and something went down. Water went up, and fire came down. Huh? But that's what I'm saying. When you're in right position with your awesome God, uh huh? You can ask for the impossible thing. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. I say, I say, you can ask for the impossible thing because with man, yes, it's impossible. Yes, yes. I say, with well, God, nothing is impossible. But you gotta be lined up with Him. You can't. The world say you can't be wishy washy. Yes. Huh? The world say you can't strive the fence. But the word say you can't be a double minded man neither. Double minded man, he, he means that you're not standing. You're not saved. And he said, you're not stable in all of your ways. See, you got to make a choice. And the Bible said, this is the day. You're not promised to the morning. Today is the day of salvation. He said, while the blood, oh my God, is running warm in your veins. We're not promised for the morning. We live tomorrow. That's the day that God allows us to see. We're going to pray for the morning. But today, I hear the preacher say, that's why I do the things that I do. I do it the best that I could do with God. Because one day, I shot the rubble. One day, it's going to be my last day. And I want God to be pleased when I do according to His word. He called us. He called me. He called his brother to do the work of Him. And we want to do it in an excellent way. If you're going to a job, you got to do it according to your supervisor. When the supervisor says do it, you going to do it. But when the church tells you something, you get church hurt. You know? Because they don't want to have honor. God is the God of honor. You got to obey honor. You go to somebody's house, you just can't just do what you want to do in anybody's house. They got honor in everything. But when it comes down to the church, the rebellious spirit, they don't want to listen. But you're going to listen to the world system. Everything got honor. God has divine honor. 
because everything was before him, before anything was him, God was him. God made man first, then woman. Jesus, God first, you know what I'm saying? Then man, that divine owner. Once you line up with God, God will start cleaning this, this temple. The things that you used to do in the world of strength in it. I'm calling it, it says sin now. All the sin that you can do. It's no longer you no more. It's the Christ now. It's the Christ that's working in us now. And helping us operate in His Word. If it, if it wasn't for God, we can't do it. We still do the same things that we've been doing. To see the Word of God coming. He said, You look at us, and He look at, at us as filthy. Grace, you see. He said, well, when you start getting to the word of God, he said, the word of God start cleaning you up and start cleaning your white and snow. You start becoming the word. You become the living. Maybe you become the living word now. Because God needs a body. And he don't need no in the body. He needs a body that's going to be for himself of him. No longer I drink. The longer I do the things in this world, I, 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 I strive for everything to keep this right, to keep me under subjection. Because I'm still around this stuff. I'm still in the sinful mind. But you the Holy Spirit. That's in me. I shut See, he's no longer a part He's in me. That's what we talk about in the New Testament church. See, we live in the New Testament. We don't live under the law. We live under the New Testament church. Hey, huh? The other sister was saying something that she should not have what she had. Because she lied. Once you line yourself up right with God, you start seeing the impossible things. I, 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 I got that. Because you're lying yourself up right with God. You're walking on straight street. And straight street means something quiet. You can't do anything on straight street. Now you go to that wide and broad street. Anything goes on that street then. God wants you on straight street. He wants to out your life. And the only one that can do it is God. But the 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 you still hold on to something. I still do this every night. I didn't like to go out with my own girls. Every night. When you walk out like we're going, God smack that out of your life. Hallelujah. You no longer you won't do that stuff no more. We call it deliverance. I can deliver from this stuff. I don't have a desire for it. Like, you know, he's not the taste out of my mouth. As the Lord, if I, if I go back to it, make this sick. That's how I'm telling you, dedicated to God. I don't want to be here step. See, we'll take God. We'll take the temple for it too. But we have to make a man of mind. We have to make a man of mind. Elisha. And he, know. he was so dedicated. And he know once you have a personal relationship with him, you don't let nothing come between you, God. The Bible said that nothing be able to separate you from the love of God. That's the thing that's going to come. If you root it and ground it into the faith. Now you got all the different types of belief out there. I think I'll tell you from faith out there. Will give you the God kind of faith is Jesus. Accept Him as your Lord and personal Savior. Now, the faith of the world. When you stay with the holy life, holy means set apart. Holy means sanctified. Now, now people say, I don't believe the word of God because man wrote the Bible. Yes, they did. But the Bible said, man wrote the Bible with the Holy Spirit. He spied the Bible. So they made it one more time with the one time. Oh, we can do it. How much money we made up that fight? Oh, we can do it. 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 Oh, we can do it.
God created us to have fellowship with him. And he gives us a choice. He says that out of your mouth, you should choose blessings or curses. Either way. But about some of the exploits uh, that God has called us to do is similar to what in the book of Nehemiah. You know, the book of Nehemiah, we read where Nehemiah was a slave. He was a Hebrew uh, enslaved, uh, in chain in Persia. I'm a Persian king. He'd been enslaved. And like many of us, he got word, he caught news that, 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 the, that the walls had been broken down at the spot, at the home place. There were several walls and all of the homes had been burned and they had been destroyed. And the wall in this book, it represents a variety of situations and obstructions and instruments in our lives. The walls that have been broken down in Persia today, it represents our family structure today. It represents our finances today. Nehemiah found out that the walls had been broken down. They had been destroyed. He found out that his relationship, his connection with property and land and uh, whatever the wills and whatever had been set aside had been destroyed. Now I want each and every one of you here today to look back, look at your own personal infrastructure. Take inventory of where you come from because that's what Nehemiah did. He looked back at the spot. He got news. He called word, whether it be first hand or somebody told first hand or somebody told him about it, whether he heard about it, he found out that the walls had been broken down. Now remember, I'm going somewhere with this. We've all been called to do great exports for God. And he heard that his finances had been destroyed. He heard that the family houses had been destroyed. 